Hello Internet, this is Brian Holland. In my last video, I demonstrated how to do some world building and character generation. I've taken this information and created a character for Dungeon World. This is Isleth, the elven wizard who, along with his scholar friend Mithralan, failed to prevent a comet from striking the Earth when they were pulled into and imprisoned by the Power Stone they were trying to use to divert its course. Isleth used his magic ruby to escape the Power Stone, but it was broken in the process and is needed to rescue Mithralan from the stone as well, for she alone has the proof that it was a comic that struck the Earth and destroyed a capital city, not an attack by that kingdom's rivals. Isleth makes his way to a gnomish city built into a cliff face underground where he hopes to get his magic ruby repaired or replaced, not aware that some of their creations, clockwork beasts, have begun running wild. Isleth races against the clock to rescue his friend Mithralan from the Power Stone as the two kingdoms begin to gear up for war once again after a decade-long standoff. If you want to see how I use my Dungeon World Oracle deck for solo play as I tackle the first session of this adventure, please stick around. Alright, so let's shuffle the deck. Now, in solo session, I like to only go through about half the deck. I do this for pacing. It lets me see roughly when I need to start wrapping up the session. Now, in Dungeon World, um, you like to start in the action, but I'm going to ask a few questions first to enhance my world building and character. Right away, I know I'm heading to this gnome city in a cliff face. But of all the places I could go, why go here? Let's ask the Oracle if I know someone here. Yes, and let's say they're a friend of mine and that can help me later. Now, I imagine this city on the inside of a chasm and you enter at the top and descend down the cliff face into the city. So I'd say the first thing I see as I approach the city is a guard post. I wanna ask the Oracle if my friend is there near the guard post somewhere. No, and I think there are more guards here than I expected to see. And that's probably because of the region problem of the Clockwork Beast running wild. We'll just have to wait and see. For now, let me ask who this friend of mine is because I don't know them yet. All I know is that I have a friend here. So let's see. Elsie, the gnome, and a trait. Ooh. That's nice. Uh, I was looking for a trait here, but I'm actually gonna use Tinkerer. Um, and that's why I've come here to see her specifically. She's the best person I know to get my magic ruby um, either fixed or replaced. And this meshes nicely with the region problem. So I'd say it's Elsie who's gonna be the one who gives me the quest to solve that. So right now I just go up to the first guard I see. I'm gonna touch him, on, touch him on the arm and cast Charm Person. That's 2d6 plus int. Okay, I get a 4, a 2, plus my int makes 8. The spell is cast, but I have a choice to make. I can draw unwelcome attention, take a minus 1 to cast spells for a while, or forget the spell. Now, I don't want to have more on my plate right now, so I'm not going to draw attention. I also don't want to impact my spell casting. So I'm just gonna forget this spell and hope that I don't need it again until I'm able to, pro to prepare my spells. All right, this guard is a friend now, so I'm gonna shake his hand and loudly say, uh, you know, hello friend, well met. Have you seen Elsie the Tinkerer around? Yes, and, okay. Um, there are certain things I know as the GM from my world building session. I know the dungeon I have to go into is a, um, it's a now flooded natural cave that the city uses as a royal crypt. So I need to answer this in a way that lets the guard reveal some of this information to my character Isola. So, um, you know, hello friend, long time, he says. She's been hanging around down by the old crypt lately. I can take you there if you don't know the way. So I smile and shake his hand more fiercely, and he takes me down several flights of steps that are carved right into the cliff face, and a couple rickety elevators. You know, they're made of wooden ropes, pretty rickety. Um, so I meet up with Elsie, and she greets me with a hug. She says, you're just the elf I wanna see, and she starts telling me about the story problems they're having. Um, you know, their creations, the clockworks, have begun running wild. 
They're not following the gnome's commands because their control crystal was stolen. This is something else I know about world building. Um, a sprite stole it and hid it in the throne room of the crypt. So I need to find out if she knows where the crystal was taken. Yes, but she didn't see it taken. It was Simon who saw it, and Simon is... Oh, here's another case where I'm actually looking for a trait, but I'm gonna go with Ghost instead because that's pretty interesting. Um, Simon the Ghost appears when Elsie calls out his name. Simon used to be an innkeeper. Let's say he was buried in the, in the crypt long ago because he has some connection to a royal family and maybe that'll come up later. So maybe the crystal caused his spirit to rise. Yes, but. Don't really know what to do with that. Um, so in Dungeon World, there are three times the GM can make a move. When everyone looks to them to see what happens, when there's a golden opportunity, or when someone rolls a six minus. I think this is a good time to use the first one because I just don't know what to do with that yes, but. So let's draw a GM move. And I get, give an opportunity that fits the class. Okay. I can use this to tie my world building and narrative together. It wasn't the crystal that awakened Simon's spirit. He tells me it was magic related to the lock that a sprite placed on the crypt when it took the crystal there. So Isolith has detect magic prepared and that kind of fits his class and helps with the narrative. Simon says he was able to leave the crypt but now the magical lock prevents him from re-entering it. So, Right now, I'm getting close to about a quarter way through the deck, and that means I'm about halfway through the session. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead narratively to kind of right before the entrance to the dungeon. Now, in another video, um, which will either come out right before or after this one, I rolled up a Clockwork Beast for the, uh, the Crypt's Guardian, and it's a dragon. Its instinct is to ambush, so I think that's what's happening as I get closer to the Crypt. Now, I really have no hopes of beating this thing in combat, so I'm gonna cast Invisibility on myself. Two, plus one, plus two is only five, so I'll mark XP. And let me draw a GM move. I get Reveal an Unwelcome Truth. Um, I think my spell is still cast, but the unwelcome truth here is that it had already seen me, so it knows exactly where I am. It flies straight at me, so I'm going to have to try to jump out of the way. That's the fight danger with dex. Get 6 and 5 and 1 is 12. So I jump out of the way, and I think the dragon continues down the tunnel thinking that, um, you know, I must have run that way. So I dodge the bullet there and continue down towards the crypt. When I get there, I'm going to look around the outside a little bit before I go in. That's the certain realities. One plus three plus zero is only four. So let me mark XP again and draw GM move. Put someone in a spot. This is actually my favorite GM move. Um, I get to come up with two bad options and make you choose one of them. But on the other side, as a player, I really hate this move because you give me two bad options and I have to choose one of them. So I think what happens is the dragon realizes that I didn't flee down the tunnel and comes back towards the crypt looking for me. So my choices are, see, I'm still invisible, so I can try to break, for, you know, make a break for the crypt. Um, but there are like vines and stuff hanging in front of the entrance. So the dragon would notice me entering the crypt. Or I can stay still and wait for the dragon to give up. But this will waste a lot of time and I'll have to mark a grim portent on my danger. And again, this is something I can't fight, so I'm just going to mark the grim portent. Now as these fill up, it's going to be even more difficult for me to move around on the surface because of all these armies that are marching around all over the place. So I remain still for a really long time and eventually the dragon heads off to set up an ambush somewhere else. Now that it's gone, rather than trying to discern realities again, I'm going to cast Detect Magic since Simon told me that there's a magical lock. 
It's a cantrip for me because I'm an elf. So I get two plus six plus two is ten. It's cast, and I think the lock is invisible because I don't see anything, but I sense a magical barrier right across the entrance. Okay. Um, I think I'm only going to make one more move since I am getting pretty close to halfway through the deck. Uh, I think Simon told me that it was a sprite that placed the lock, so I'm going to consult my knowledge about sprites. I'm also going to pull a book from my bag of books to help on the roll. That's Spout Lore. Get six, plus one, plus two for int, add one more for the book, and that's ten. So I get something interesting and useful. Let me find the sprite card real quick. That's the next card. So his instinct is to play tricks. So I think the book that I pulled out was called uh, Fairy Magic and Sprightly Tricks. What's interesting here is that it's definitely fairy magic over the entrance. What's useful is that it's a really simple trick. You can bypass the lock by, um, let's just say, by walking through it backwards instead of walking through it forward. So that's what I do. I turn around and walk backwards through the entrance and I'm able to enter the crypt. All right, that was a single session of solo play. Now I will follow the procedures for end of session before I go ahead and start my next session. If you liked this video, uh, please hit the like button for me and let me know in the comments if you want to find out what happens when I get into the crypt. Or you can find out yourself with your own Oracle deck. If you like my content, please subscribe and share it with your friends. I have my Oracle deck linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.